So, yeah, anime boobies are the best boobies in the world. I'm oh. just going to say that. Oh, you're going to fit in very well then. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Collector Car Feed. Today we have something different for you. We interviewed Lennon, the proprietor of Dorky Dory. Dorky Dory is a household name in the S Chassis community. He started as a t-shirt company almost 20 years ago and then graduated to making body kits and coilovers. The man is a wealth of S Chassis info and history, so please enjoy. Here we go. What is the rules on swearing for this? Try not to say the N-word. I know you're it's gonna be no. hard. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just oh, try. Shit, watch, yeah. Not to say the N-word and we'll be That's okay. it. It's a loose rule. <laughs> Are you All right, right everybody. Yes. Thank you for coming today. We have a special, special S chassis report. With us is Lennon. Lennon Franz, right? Or Franz? Oh, I usually go by Lennon Midnight, but sure, Lennon, Lennon Franz, why not? Lennon Midnight of, uh, <laughs> the, of Dorky Dory fame. He is an elder god in the S chassis 246 community. A mythic rare, if you will. Uh, you give me way too much credit. <laughs> and if you don't know, you dorky dory, they basically make uh, lips, side skirts, bumpers, stuff like that, as well as T-shirts and uh, other stuff. You, you got, We've got the website up right now. So this should be fun. And uh, Len, thank you for coming, man. You're welcome. First off, what got you into 240s? That's a really old question. Uh, <laughs> just a question with a really old history. One of my best friends in the whole world named Tony in 2001, he had bought a 98 S14 Koki from a Nissan dealership. And I had just discovered like the street racing scene. Him and I used to watch like Fast and the Furious 1. It came out on DVD. We'd constantly, like we watched that movie a million damn times. I was gonna, I was gonna say you'd rewind it, but no, it was a DVD. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> a side note, thanks to the PlayStation 2, it became the most successful video game system ever because I mean, you youngins have no idea, but at the time DVD had just come out and the PS2 came with a built-in yeah DVD that was player. huge so the ps2 that was, was my huge. first dvd player yeah yeah the same here the of ps2 people. just exploded because it had a dvd player and it was a ps2 plus it played all playstation one games so it was just like the god tier console but anyway back onto the no <laughs> back onto the actual yeah. question because we're showing how old we all are here yeah my, my best friend tony like he had bought a 1998 s14 koki it was it was uh forest green and it was automatic i just gotten you know him and i had gotten into the the fast and the furious thing and at the time, I had my first car, which was an 88 Accord, and uh, driving around with him and his 240 and his girlfriend's Maxima, I was like, wow, my Accord kind of sucks. So I found, um, it was April of 2002, I found a 1990 with like 80,000 miles on it for like 3,000 bucks, and uh, that was that was kind of the start of it. I think there's only been a year where I haven't had a 240 in my life, and that was from when I sold my fourth coupe, my, my fourth, it was actually a one Via, when I sold my fourth coupe due to financial issues, and then a year later, Later in July of 2010, I bought the current hatch that I have now. Uh, it's kind of turned into a lifelong, <laughs> lifelong obsession. But also, yeah, not, yeah, not I, can, I, can, I can see. So what? What started Dorky Dory? Dorky Dory was started in 2007. The name was actually a nickname a girl gave me that I was dating because like in in, in, in the uh, drifting scene in the, in like 2004 here in Vegas, all the guys and I would, you know, like I was actually one of the founding members of Vegas Drift. We all joked, like we all gave the, the prefix, the, the word Dory to like everything. So like Dory Dory truck or Dory Dory wrench because of the Dory Dory mesh wheels from SSR. I, somehow the girl I was dating, she started calling me Dorky Dory. Dory. And in like 2006, when I got the idea for doing shirts and you know, of like 240SX and car stuff, the name Dorky Dory just instantly popped into my head. I think I did my first shirts in for April or May of 2006, 2007. I was working at Gecko Wraps. We had a screen printer next door to us and he came in and offered his services. And I'm like, yeah, I want to make shirts. And I went home, designed a shirt. That night I bought like 20 blanks. And the next day I had him print the shirts up and I just sold them to friends and family and got rid of all 20 shirts by like the weekend. And that, that was literally the start of it and then 2013 was nobody was making s13 sylvia replica skirts and i was like hell i'll do that so I, I found a set some guy in thailand was selling a set and i bought them and brought them over and found a fiberglass shop here in town to replicate them and it's not the current fiberglass shop that i use it was uh, the, the 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 shop that the first shop i used they uh they closed down just they were they were the owner was terrible. <laughs> he was just really, he was a negative person. Just really, anytime I go pick up skirts or any talk to him, it was just all just negativity and it sucked. But yeah, um, the S13 V1 skirts are literally my first part 
and it just everything just snowballed with the shirt thing i did a lot with that i i did a lot of um freelance work for like part shop max uh fortune auto Gretti usa joe tech motorsports down in texas mvp motorsports z1 motorsports i was you know blessed to work with so many amazing brands in this country like even just my own shirts you know like people really like them and it's not a focus anymore very i get i think this year i've had 60 60 out of shirt orders out of like the like 200 i have sitting in my laundry room i'm actually wearing a dorky dory shirt right now oh which one i got it at nismo fiesta i think 2013 or something like that in san antonio i think i know which one that is let me pull it up on my computer really quick i have all i have like a lot of my freelance work still on my machine my (laughs) friends of mine call me a digital hoarder because i have like hard drives all the way back from like high school of stuff you got to keep it because otherwise it's gone forever you know that's like it's kind of something we take for granted in in the digital age yeah that's it that's the one this is the one you're wearing yeah so i like those i mean it's 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 crazy to go from t-shirts to hard parts like that's it's a huge jump and like i i can't even fathom what it would take to make that leap you know that's that's pretty that's pretty amazing honestly it just it was kind of a natural progression because like my dorky dory has always been an aesthetic company and aero parts are a natural aesthetic to the vehicle so you know i when i started out obviously i had no no idea what i was doing and you know this is nine years later that i'm into this stuff so you know i have a much much better working knowledge and the thing i like about doing the aero parts thing even like not so much shirts but still shirts but just the aero parts thing now is that i'm always learning something new whenever i start a new part and um, yeah i look back at the stuff i didn't like at the beginning of doing the aero parts and i <laughs> there were so many things i overlooked and i'm rectifying yeah I'm, I'm rectifying old mistakes currently with the plans that i have for 2023 anyone who settles and stops growing with agnates they do, they've either given up or they've lost because they don't see their own faults. And like, to me with, with everything I make, there's like, I see everything I hate about everything I make. (laughs) Yeah. I definitely understand that. The curse of being, being an artist and the curse of being who I am is that, you know, with every single part, like I know the things that are wrong with them. I know the things that I don't like about them, but I, try to take that knowledge to what I do next. And it actually goes back to a silly story that in my band days, I'm acting like it's 10 years ago. It was just like three years ago. Going through my band stuff and making friends with the people that I made friends with, especially um, a guy by the name of Nero Bellum. He's the lead singer and main producer of a band called Cyclone 9. Nero told me one day, he's like, dude, let me give you a piece of advice about your album. This is when I'm still working on the first album, Fallacies and Other Disappointments. He's like, dude, you need to learn when to stop with your music. Like, you can spend your entire life working on an album and it will never be perfect because you keep growing and changing. So you need to learn how to stop. You need to get to a stopping point on what you're doing and just release it. And then take everything you learned from that first album. Go to the next one. Yeah, all the mistakes you made, all the things you hate, apply it to your next album. And, and then uh, keep is, that keep that process going. Yeah, and this is also, there's another thing that a art teacher of mine in college told me, your worst pieces are your best pieces because your worst pieces teach you the most because you can point out every single thing you hate about them. Your best pieces are actually your worst pieces because you can't point out all the things you hate about them. That applies even to my parts. You know, there's there's things about everything I do that I want to change, I, I learn from, and I try to apply that uh, the next thing I work on. So, we got a question from the chat asking about arrow an arrow mold arrow it's s13 arrow bumper if you're going to make a new one or uh I'll, I'll 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 reveal it i'm trying to get the mold back to vegas oh i sold that mold to a buddy of mine here in town he owns carbon fiber hoods and the mold currently resides with xenon and there have been some issues between carbon fiber hoods and xenon and i'm trying to rectify those issues and also get the mold back here he is my buddy his name's edward he's him and i we've been friends for a long time and i he was over here picking up some um uh, arrow bumper vent inserts because he sells them on his site him and i were talking i was like you know would you be okay with with me using the mold again he's like yeah that's not a problem dude fucking you know, we get it back here let's let's do this and i was like cool so we're working on getting the mold back to vegas from xenon it's down in texas right now oh well awesome and then that'll be some some new arrow arrow bumpers coming out then oh, old new new old yeah yeah well i gotta ask you're you know very upbeat you know from every to every time you and i have spoken you, you come off as very positive a positive person upbeat i i have to give you credit because 
catering to the 240SX community, it seems a kind of a thankless job. It's a group of angry, stingy people, you know, people that don't want to spend money on things. I don't know if I'd say that about them. Um, I mean, like, I obviously I've had my first 240 since 2002, and I've watched the 240 scene go through a lot of changes. The 240 scene has always been kind of very brutal. I mean, like, even back in the, even back in the Zilvia days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now it's especially a lot different. Uh, social media has really, social media really messes things up. Um, people are very nasty to one another. And you know, to me with the 240 scene now, there was a video I was watching where the person talking was, he mentioned people gatekeep a lot of information and things like that. And I, I don't see that as a good thing. You know, I think you and I discussed, you know, somebody could come into the one of the groups and ask a silly question and then dude gets ragged on by like 50 people yeah it's everyone like, dog okay. piles yeah. yeah it's like okay i got it you know the guy asked a silly question but at the same time instead of being a jerk why don't you just answer the guy's question okay yeah he he could have spent 15 seconds on google and found it via zilvia that's fine but you know he he this might be his first 240 he's got no clue what he's doing he has no experience whatsoever and you're gonna kick him in the nuts for opening for him opening his mouth that is just to me it's 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 really shitty it's like, why not just take the 15 seconds to rag on the guy and just answer his question in a, in a nice way? You know, with, with I think I think Facebook has made that worse because yeah. I, I I really wish that forums would come back. Like it's I think forums were the were the, were the yeah. best thing for automotive information. I'm really glad and if that someone Sylvia asked, came back because it was yeah. gone for like six months, a year, something like that. And who knows if it was if it was ever going to come back at that point? Right. You know, nobody knew. Uh, the story behind that is um, a lot of the mods, the mods and the admin, admins, including me, were trying to get a hold of the owners. From what we understand, one of the owners pulled completely out of Zilvia. So it, it's down to just one guy owning it now. And uh, nobody could get a hold of them. And nobody knew what was going on with Zilvia, like hosting and, and uh, it being up or down or whatever. A couple of the admins were trying to buy the site so they could host it on a, on a separate server. They could update it with newer, newer backend software and, um, you know, bring it back to life. And it, it, it never, I don't think it ever came to fruition, but obviously Zilvia is back. It's kind of a ghost town, but you know, most of us old school users still use it. It's a wealth of information. Somebody needs to back it up if that hasn't happened already. Yeah, because because if if, <laughs> if all the information on Zilvia is lost, that's like the burning of the library at Alexandria. Yes. That's okay, and in, in the chat, MGR99, you just posted a picture of Ali G's car. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, gosh, yeah. Wicked, wicked, jungle is massive. <laughs> I, love, I love that movie. Max Power Magazine. That's a that's a serious throwback. Yeah. K European K sex style yeah. cars. I was actually I was like 2003 or four. I was featured in. I did an interview for a European for a UK car magazine called Revs about drag racing and street racing in in Vegas. And um, Revs was actually kind of an interesting magazine. I don't like in the UK boobies and what's the word fanny is used for the word vagina here. So tits and fanny in the UK are a lot different than they are here in the US. US, US, a lot of Americans are very prudish, like, oh my God, boobs, I might die. Yeah. But so in revs, like there's there's usually two or three featurettes of like a girl or two girls, you know, topless and like it's soft core not, stuff, right? Yeah, soft core stuff, basically. But it was it was an interesting insight, especially at the time, to like Europe to UK car culture and, and boy racer car culture. And like what we were doing in the US, what Japan was doing, and what the UK were doing. Oh, it was like three times totally different things <laughs> and yeah, yeah i'd, I'd those... pull up some max power scans right now but it gets kicked off of youtube because of the pruder stuff you were just talking about oh, like, max power i love max power I forgot what we were talking about that we got so uh, oh it was t it was about forums and and facebook oh yeah i don't i so, don't ever foresee forums coming back just because yeah, and that, and it sucks yeah because when someone asks a dumb question on a forum it's like fine who cares you don't have to click on it and only the real assholes will jump in someone asks what's what's the best oil for stance you know and, and nor <laughs> normal people will just oh i'm not, not gonna click on that it. yeah I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just not even gonna click on it because i don't care about that and then that, and that then, boils down to the halogen fluid you're running yeah yeah <laughs> 
And and the four assholes are going to be the ones that go in, oh, you should have searched, you should have searched. Like, dude, it took you more time to, to click on there, go in, and get mad at this guy. Whereas Facebook, everything is kind of at the top all the time. Yeah. And it just makes it easy just, just to shit on somebody, you know? Also, Facebook oh. groups are, they're difficult to search. It's it's hard to archive yeah. You can't find anything. Yeah, yeah, you can't find any information. That's, I hate I, I hate Facebook groups. We're a generation removed now, so you know, like we grew up with forums and groups and all that stuff. I'll agree, it's not the same as it used to be. But as far as being positive toward people in the 240 scene, I do my best to do that because it's like the 240 scene really needs something like that. They, you know, people people need to like not talking about like brown nosing, but just be nicer to one another. Is it that hard to like? Again, what I said I, earlier. I'm I'm definitely of the opinion that that the 240 community. Is pretty toxic. It's just like angry dudes. Yeah. And and what it is, it's to me, it's kind of like siblings. You know, the older sibling will beat up on the younger sibling, and then when that younger sibling is older than somebody, he's like, "Oh, guess what? It's my turn. I'm gonna beat up on my my younger cousin." Well, you know, or, in some ways, that's not a bad thing because you know, if if you grew up with sibling siblings, I was an only child, so I didn't. But if you grew up with siblings, you know, you had your sibling rivalry, and I think we all grew up in a very different time compared to now where, yeah. you know, like especially in the 90s, you know, somebody said something that somebody else didn't like. It was like, you got into a fight, you beat the crap out of one another and you bought each other a beer after you were done. Yeah, and then it's, it's squashed after that. Yeah, and, and and men have a very different way of interacting with one another. You know, like I got a, I, my, my coworker in my office on, on Thursday, I kind of got into it with him and then I took a time out. He went to lunch, he came back. And I said, hey, you know, I came off wrong. Let's start over. And he's like, hey man, not a problem. Fucking, you know, fist bump on it. You know, we were cool. You know, you, you have, as, as, a, as a guy, you know, you have to get particularly to like, I think, do well in life. You got to get the crap beat out of you. And yeah. You got to learn how to fight. And, yeah. You got to uh, get ready for it. Pot in the uh, the Reddit said, Your hot air hatch is hot. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> to me, it looks like it looks, it's just, to me, it's like seven different colors of white and it's beat up exterior wise. It's a, it's a total 10 footer and I'm good at Photoshop. But, but, but that's, <laughs> that's where we're at. You know, we, we, that that's what's that's what's clean nowadays it's, it's it's weird when i see people actually like compliment my car because like to me my car looks like a heap uh it's the exterior is the only part of the car that isn't done and like uh like all the suspension's done like everything that was that was rubber is now polyurethane or, or heim joints the motor's done outside of the turbo i just need to replace it my turbo is it, my s15 turbo is just old and it's pushing oil past the intake side it's been a great turbo but and the interior is done so the exterior i just it, i don't want to sink any money into it because fitting aero parts you know if i mess up a ten thousand dollar paint and body paint job and body work it's just like Okay, I'm gonna go shoot myself now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered right, getting into buddy. anything else besides the the S chassis? Do you do body parts for anything else? No, oh, I'd like to, but there's just so much that I have to do that investing in, in other well, I don't know any other <laughs> The the other like other chassis from the nineties, obviously, like the Z, the Supra, mm -hmm. the RX seven, F C F D, whatever, uh the S two thousand, yes, that's a nineties car, it came out in ninety nine. Uh just all the nineties cars. Um I don't know a lot about, you know, what's popular aero wise. I don't have the history, the study of, you know, what happened in those particular cars, the S chassis. Right. Wow, because, can... Yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of the knowledge comes from being there. Yeah, and uh, yeah. we were just looking at Zilvia a minute ago, and you've been a member of Zilvia since 2003. You're coming up on 20 years of membership yeah. on, on Zilvia. Oh. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've, got, you've got a couple questions in the Discord chat. Kenley yeah. asks... Top three S13s. Is that a and question? I guess. Or he, I, guess he just, I think he's I asking. Know. Yeah, like why, what variations? I guess. I'm. There's no question mark on it, so grammatically, I have no <laughs> idea if it's a question <laughs> or a statement. He, he wants to know people's personal cars, like uh, cars in the community that you like. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Uh, bubbles. Um, you have to look. Um, Super okay S13. I love his car to death. He's a good buddy of mine. The funny thing is, like, side story is uh, there's an internet cat, and I'll have a sticker out for him with Gizmo soon. But uh, there's an internet cat named Friendly Noodles, and his owner and I have become really good friends. And he has an S13. He's really big in the 240s. I really like his car a lot. Um, What's his name? Go to Instagram oh, and uh, look up Noodles Dad. I think, hang on. <laughs> Noodles Dad. Okay. Noodle Father. Oh, noodles. Noodle Noodles underscore dad. Uh, he's he's like wanting he wants me to get like more Sylvia stuff done so I can like send him things. But him and I are like I just created a sticker for 
noodles, noodle and gizmo. And how do I, can I send it to somebody? Hang on. Okay, fair uh, enough. On me is though on discord also had a question for you. So will there be plans for more arrow variation than what's already on the site? Yeah, I saw that earlier. I meant to comment on that. I have a lot more coming out. Most of you guys don't know. I work a day job Monday through Thursday. So the only time I get to work on stuff is Friday and Saturday for the most part. And then Sunday, like I'll take care of like small shit on the computer. But uh, my, my weekends have been occupied over the last two months with just prepping, packing, and shipping urethane parts to everyone. So I don't have any more urethane stuff on order until like late January, early February. So over the next two months, I get to actually focus back on making new aero parts. And um, like the, the old Gracer bumper that I'm working on, I got to get that off the molding. I need a good three or four hours solid of just like sanding on it. And then it'll be ready for production or for molding. So the, the V3 hatch kit will be available. Um, unfortunately, the one via kit won't be because the this the coop balances are a little screwed up right now just like a million things on my end yes i have plans for a lot of other stuff coming out it's just getting everything done until mm -hmm. or getting everything done until the next urethane order is like the biggest thing right now i know where i need to be financially with dorky dory and i'm not quite there yet i'm three to six months out from being able to do this full time that'd, that'd be mm -hmm. pretty sick yeah I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting for the for that chooky lip to come out but the oem one or the yeah the, the oem there? one yeah i'll have that's uh, I hopefully it will have that out before next summer. Awesome. Kenley says that he wanted to get the coilovers, but he couldn't stomach the lead time, unfortunately. And that's another thing that that uh, I think is really cool. The the, the coilovers that you're making. Do you want to uh, tell us a bit about those? Um, those are something I started working with uh, a manufacturer here in the U.S. He's he's primarily does Subaru stuff. And oh, is, uh, f is that is it? F that's fine. Uh, the configuration that him and I built for my coilovers, you cannot order from him. They are specific to my product line, and he will not make them for anyone else. Yeah, so they're, they're um, what the hell's a fancy word for it? Proprietary. Yes, and f like his brand is blowing up like crazy. He was contracted by both Honda and Volkswagen to make custom coilovers for concept cars. And also, I think Volkswagen was building an electric car for LA class and he built the coilovers for it. Wow. So people are like, oh, your shit's just rebranded eBay crap. It's like, no, you have no idea what you're talking about. Shut up. <laughs> like, go, go spew that somewhere else. Like, what? Yeah, be it, because, because people. A lot of people get that I, that BC coilover kind of mindset, you know, where oh, it's all everything's BC, it's all coming out of the same factory, right? Yeah. It's all red, so it has are, to be Godspeed, right? Yeah, mine are um, they're they're custom built. They're using. I don't think he actually even offers the entry level anymore. But after running two sets of prototypes, like, I really like my coilovers, and I'm not trying to hype my own product. I just know there's a certain street behind my fiberglass manufacturer shop that my yellow speed drift specs oh god they killed my kidneys like i i could not go down that street and i'm not hating on yellow speed because those drift spec coilovers for a track coilover they were amazing like the feedback and response you got from like from loading one side of the car or other with weight they were amazing as far as street driving they were terrible like they were just super aggressive and working with on the coilovers that we put together. I just wanted something that was like a more mature coilover that was for guys who were old like me, who wanted to drop their car and also wanted like a decent ride out of it. And these are great on the street. And people are like, you know, do these work on track? Yeah, I've thrown my car around in a couple parking lots, you know, where we meet here in Vegas and it worked just fine. Yeah, and and because the, the thing is, it's like, what would a, would a pure track, bit, track bread coilover be better on the track. Okay, sure, maybe. But for a car that spends 90, 99% of its time on the street, you know, I'd much rather have a comfortable street ride and still be able to do something on the track for the for the times that I'm going to be on the track, you know? Absolutely. And most most guys who run coilovers, they're never going to they're never going to need like $3,000 Olins. Yeah. Uh, most people who run coilovers just want to like, they want the stance thing for it. And for me being 40, you know, I've, I've, I've been riding on coilovers since 2004 and I've owned the gamut of coilovers from like $600 circuit spec, circuit specs. I can't talk circuit spec coilovers all the way up to $3,000 custom valve JIC FLT ARs. And most people have no idea who JIC is anymore. Us old guys remember JIC is like J one of the top gear brands. Jick, Jick magic. Uh, JIC magic. And, um, JICs were, they were, I'm good coilovers, but 
the, my favorite coil over in the world was the Buddy Buddy Club racing specs, and those were like twenty eight hundred dollar coilovers when I got them back in I think they, they it was two thousand seven I think two thousand eight, and they were just damn good coilovers. So like everything that I've run since those, I always try to compare them to the Buddy Clubs in terms of their performance. And for the younger people listening, my coilovers easily compare to Fortune Auto five hundreds, like in their ride quality and their performance, everything about them. They come with a three year warranty. They're fully rebuildable here in the U.S. No parts on my coilovers come from China. They're all sourced from Japan, Europe, and the U.S. The springs come from U.S. The the dampers themselves come from Europe, and all the a lot of the uh, components on the coilovers come from Japan. So wow. these are not like cheap Chinese eBay knockoff coilovers. No, these are all built to order. These are all specific, and I, I'm not trying to hype my own parts, but like my coilovers. They ride really well. They perform really well. I really enjoy them, and if I didn't like them. I never would have put them on my site for sale for you guys. For a while there, I was selling circuit sport uh, circuit circuit sports parts along with phase two parts and nobody bought them. And what people don't understand is like everything I had on my site, I personally run. So I know it works. Oh like, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. it's stuff that you're kind of putting the stamp of approval on. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, and unfortunately, not a lot of people read, you know, the product description of like, I had this part on my car for like four years. I had this part on my car for three years. It worked. It ran fine. It was great. You don't need a $500 version of this because you're never going to utilize the precision and what it was built for. I'm not hating. It's just. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's I, a I truth. A lot of, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a difficult truth is what it is. A lot of younger guys just are, are, are you know, they, they, they want to run the, you know, the, the $800 full angle kit from gk tech or or part shop max and it's like you don't need that no they just want the brand yeah. and they want to have the parts they like to build something that they're not necessarily going to use like it's like uh we've we've compared it to like building a skateboard like going all out on your skateboard when you know like the mongoose from target will probably get you where you need to be yeah uh, and the, the thing people don't realize is like a lot of the best drifters in the world through my time as being young and through even current times, like a lot of these guys learn how to kick ass and take numbers using the most basic things on like low horsepower. And it, like a lot of guys I talk to now, they're like, I need six or 700 horsepower to drift. It's like, no, you don't. Have you ever driven an S chassis with more than 300 wheel horsepower? No. Try that in, in people terms, in drag racing terms. 300 wheel horsepower in an S chassis with good tires and hookup, it'll put you into the high 12s. Yeah. Fast. I'm just scrolling really quick. Silver asked, when's the SA3R sticker coming? I make SA3R stickers, so, but I, this is future plans, but like anything that I personally pack, like shirts, urethane parts, all that stuff, get a sticker pack with them. And there's like usually five or six stickers in there. So my wheel stickers are random, but there are SA3R stickers. There's also Ani stickers, and I think that's it. <laughs> all right. So Rylan Ray says, one of my friends owns your Type X skirts. Would you consider making OEM skirts or lips for Hondas? A lot of stuff out there is still garbage quality. I won't go to the Honda community. I The only Honda community that ever got into anything that I did was the S2000 community. The the front wheel drive guys, like basically, I mean, eat a dick and leave. So I never <laughs> went back. <laughs> They are, they are they are worse than 240 guys, I would say. Even they're even cheaper, you know. Uh, this was back in 2009 or 10. I made an EK shirt and I made an Integra shirt. And the funny thing was, the Integra shirt had Blitz, not the O3s, but the Techno Speeds on it. And people were like, "Oh, those wheels are shit." Blah 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 blah. And now Techno Speeds are like highly sought after. <laughs> but you posted the sticker. <laughs> doot doot. We go scoot scoot. Oh yeah yeah. There's that the, the sticker. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll put it I'll put it again so you can see a feed. Noodles dad loved that. And and also um, noodle uh, Rebecca the uh, dad's wife like she thought it was adorable so oh, hell yeah, I've just got to make I've, I've got to make some more I've got to actually make those into stickers that's that's a pretty great sticker to be honest so I I I really like your coilovers and I had my my heart set on a set of Blitz coilovers for my Sylvia but huh? I don't know I might get some of yours we'll see what happens. Pick mine up and, you know, just bug me after we get done with this. Ken Lee said the lead time. Uh, The lead times are actually coming down on the coilovers. My manufacturer has um, put a priority on his on his retailers and and, and, uh, custom coilovers for brands. The one set of coilovers I have on order was received November 2nd. Those are actually going out in the mail next week. 
So if that gives you any kind of idea for the lead times on these things. Oh, getting, okay. Getting yeah, that's that. I mean, a little bit over a month. And it, these they're not being made in batches, so it's not like they can instantly go in the mail. I'd love to get to the point where I could be like, oh, yeah, let me get 10, you know, 10 sets of them. Yeah, and I, have them on the shelf ready to go. I don't, have, I don't have that kind of bankroll right now for something that I only sell like maybe one or two sets of every couple, couple of months. Are there any plans to provide shipping outside the USA? Unfortunately, no, not right now. Getting anything large outside of the US, uh, you, you're, the cost is insane. It sucks. Like I know there's a lot of guys in Australia who want my stuff, but like a set of, like a set of skirts shipped to Australia is like asking price on my website plus another $600. <laughs> uh, Control Alt Bingo in the chat says, will we get any two-tone compatible hatch bumpers? Because that would be absolutely dope nasty. <laughs> um, I guess, I, I guess I, bumpers with the, with the, indi the indentation. Is that, yeah. is that what you're asking, Control Alt? I'm thinking of all that I have planned. I don't think there's anything I have planned that's two-tone compatible. Um, I've got border kit planned, which most people in the U.S. have never seen. Uh, the Sea West, the old Sea West kit. The funny thing was I actually received a whole bunch of threats from some jackass on Instagram about my Sea West kit. <laughs> Like he was, he was, he was talking all kinds of big game. Like we're watching you and all this other crap. And I made some calls. I found out who the guy was and where he lived. I made some phone calls to people in that area. And they're like, we've never heard of this guy. Jackass. <laughs> oh, I don't know if he's listening, but if you are, dude, like, I don't know what your problem is. Get off your high horse. Seriously. Fuck I explained to you that like everything, everything that I'm releasing is not one-to-one -one from here on out. Yeah. That's the old, that's the old border kit. Except mine doesn't use the 180SX Koki stuff. It uses uh chooky markers. Some, this is some pray to God of Bomex type stuff here. Uh, yeah, not really. This this was border is um, border's been one of my favorite kits since I was like 19. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think actually I, I haven't put them on. My, I haven't matched them up yet. But I actually think that front bumper may work with my version, my, my, my hot road skirts because of the way the way the body line falls. Buddy clubs are so sexy. Yes, they are. Buddy club was they didn't do a whole lot of Nissan stuff. But what they did was absolutely great. Uh, fuck Fortunato. No, Fortunato is a great brand. Um, the owner, I, I don't know if he still owns it or not. His name is Terry. Terry is, he was an amazing human being. I love that guy to death. Ricky Dory, will there be specific tune coilovers for any German cars? No, sorry. It's just S chassis stuff. S14, LOL. What's wrong with that? I think your S14 looks great. What is, he sold. what is going on in this? I, I've seen this before, but is this like a Z32, like C pillar stuck oh, onto? Yeah, or? They, yeah. yeah, they came up. Yeah, Border came out with a C pillar cover a long time ago. The funny thing is they actually made a fuel rail uh, I've, I've got one. I bought it. It was new old stock. It cost me like 500 bucks. I bought it like last year and it's, it's not compatible with the Gretty intake manifold. You have to make custom brackets for it. Do you remember the early, the, the early days, early 2000s days of eBay when you could get almost anything for the Sylvia and it was like cheap? A, a Sylvia I, front was like a thousand dollars shipped. Are you kidding? It was like it was like seven hundred bucks shipped. Yeah, I have a I have a the first the reason that I owned a two forty SX is because there was a two thousand two issue of Sport Compact car that had a cover story that said build this S thirteen Sylvia for three thousand dollars, and in it they talk about buying a oh, front was clip. That Project Sylvia. Yeah, it was. Well, yeah, I think the, it was the, the start of the Project black Sylvia. One. Yeah, yeah, the, the no, flat it was, black it was, one. It was actually it was primer. It was primer matte black. Yeah. yeah, the matte. Yeah, it was matte black and it had like gloss black stripes. Yeah, the cover car though or, or was like a, black stripes. It was like a cherry red pearl one. Uh, it was just you know they were talking about you know this is what you could build and they start working on Project Sylvia in that or Project S13 or whatever it was called in Sport Compact Car. Yeah, I can't really remember, but it's Project Sylvia. Just Project Sylvia. <laughs> yeah. But they bought a front clip with all the body panels with an SR in it and they paid 1500 bucks picked up for it. Like that's my Jesus. front clip. Yeah. My, my first SR front clip was 1200 bucks. Wow. Rylan says, what do those front clips go for now? Probably seven to 10. You can't get front clips anymore. Yeah. I haven't seen a front clip in, in ages. A and a lot clip. of times it, it, it'll be a front cut with no, with no motor. Yeah, uh, like uh, SR motor sets in Japan are going for just like the motor, like a sh like a long block or like five grand. Rylan Ray asks, can you explain what bricks are on the S13? Neck, are you can bricks? It's it's just the halogen, the halogen. Yeah, headlights. bricks are just the halogen lights. Like there was three different styles of Sylvia headlights. There was um, what everybody oh, calls uh, bricks. 
there was dual projectors and triple projectors, and the bricks were actually the base model headlights. They were the J's headlights. The um, the dual projectors and triple projectors were Q's and K's headlights. Like literally, they were, back in the day, they were like the throwaway headlight in Japan. Everybody yeah, and them. somehow <laughs> they've it it, it kind of I I don't like the way the bricks look. I've never liked the way the bricks look, and it kind of bothers me that that's the hot thing. Uh, I I think it's just due to rarity, and and I, I don't know the halogens. Like I've got to actually. I, I last summer I bought a set of. Uh, headlights a small letter grill and 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 turn signals out of japan or corner markers out of japan for an obscene amount of money but they were like in like factory mint condition and i was planning on using them on my car for when i do the sylvia bumpers i've got to convert my hatch to a sil 80 and um i'm just gonna actually gonna buy a set of bricks because those things are like uh, the, the plastic ones that are being printed because i don't want to like mess up my mint condition glass ones yeah and the I've, light got, I've, I've got a I've got a set of a brand new set of uh, triple triple projectors coming from from Alex. Oh, cool! That that stuff just hasn't I found made it. it to the states yet. You know, Cam EJ eight says I like the bricks; they look more aggressive. I I'll tell you why I like the projectors is because when it was you know the early two thousands and you saw those projectors on the car, it made it look so futuristic, like. That that does not look like a car from well, 1990 like, actually, to I, me. No, I was just having this conversation the other day with a, a couple of friends of mine. Uh, like I, I see a lot of people in the 240 community like hating on the S chassis, calling it a piece of shit car, and calling the SR a piece of shit, and the CA a piece of shit, and even the RB a piece of shit. And it's like what really upsets me is like what you guys, what you young guys don't understand is the technology that went into the S chassis and a lot of these 90s Nissans. The automotive industry didn't catch up until the 2000s, like until yeah. like, really the late 2000s. The suspension makeup, like. In the current day Mustang, it's the same suspension setup as an S chassis. Outside of the divided spring on the lower, I think the divided spring on the lower control arm. Yeah, the the whole s suspension setup is identical. The SR, the RB, the CA, uh, even the VG using coil packs, individual coil packs, not waste spark, but individual coil packs. Yeah, that didn't happen industry wide until the 2010s. Yeah, it was. Uh, um, Coil on plug didn't probably until the early 2000s cars didn't have coil on plug like my shitbox daily driver protege five it used coil packs but it used like the Mitsubishi evolution setup where it was waste spark where you only had two coils per you had a single coil was two cylinders or so two cylinders yeah spark. whereas like Nissan was actual direct ignition for each cylinder and that yeah. didn't become standard until the 2010s and these cars were like way ahead of their time. And what it really, what upsets me is like these, the, the, the S chassis will never be another car like this. You guys need to understand this. There will never be another vehicle like this period. These cars are very special. And I know like, Oh, he's just humping the S chassis because he's been building them for 20 years. Yeah. I've been building them for 20 years, but guess what? There's nothing on the market like them. Anybody who's a fan of the FRS or the BRZ the cars cute, but it's slow. <laughs> Like before yeah. I had my car tuned, I was coming back from lunch with one of my best friends. And at 12 pounds of boost, I left the BRZ like it was standing still. And this guy oh, was yeah, no for sure. You can say, oh, well, it handles well. Yeah, my pro my daily driven protege with 140 horsepower handles well. And yeah, it's fun to go through turns and not lift off the gas. It's a boring ass car. <laughs> it's flat out. There's no car. There will never be another car like the S chassis. There will never be another car like the 90s GTR. There will be another, never be another car like the 90s Z32. There will never be another FD. The, the, the 90s were basically the 90s were golden era for Japanese cars like the 60s were for American cars. And yeah, there's yeah. been a total there's there's been another renaissance with American cars recently in i'd say the last 10 to 15 years where you have like the hellcat you know the mustangs the making, mustang yeah the, the, mustang the camaro 700, 800 horsepower the camaros all that stuff but the japanese they have messed up so bad they, they put a car out let's i will take a perfect example the 370z that thing's a hunk of shit i don't care how and many you know the the, the 400z they it's they could have done the z it's not the 400z it's just the z oh the z they could have done so well with it but it's it, it, it's it's a the 370z with a turbo motor that's all it yeah is. it's a reskin 370z and they and they well, just want on, too much money for it it's not it's competitive it's not totally took a page out of dodge's playbook with the charger and the challenger it's the same damn chassis that was released like 15 years ago yeah they just kept updating it and they've been milking it the they've been milking car. it the whole time for a man from a manufacturing perspective that's great because the amount of tooling that they don't have to pay for 
are raking in profit with it. So mm-hmm. Nissan did this with the 370Z. And yeah, okay, you know what? The, the 180SX was made from 89 all the way up until 98. The 180SX consistently sold, and that's why Nissan kept it. What a lot of people don't realize, that's why the, the 180 was made for so long. It was it was just such it a was selling. seller. The, the Z, they tried to pull the same crap with, but the Z is just, it, it turned into a zombie. Nobody freaking wanted it. They were selling like 3,000 to 4,000 of a year toward its end of its lifespan, and that was for a good five or six years. It was just, it turned into a zombie, and nobody wanted it. Yeah. While you had the American car manufacturers just beating the crap out of it with everything they released. I mean, even the, um, I know I'm going to get hate for this, but like the four cylinder, the EcoBoost Mustang, that is the new Sylvia. Yeah, we've said that before. It's, yeah. 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 It's, it's a reasonably priced 300 horsepower turbocharged FR. I mean, there's nothing really to hate about the S550 Mustang base model. It's a good car. Oh, and like I test drove one in 2015 when they came out with it. It was literally like driving a stock S13. Mm-hmm. Boost fall off was in the same spot because the turbo is too small. Its handling was the same. Making U turn, it did it in the exact same amount of distance. is is literally a new Sylvia, and people like refuse to accept this. They're like, no, that's blasphemous. Well, you know the S the Sylvia is the Japanese Mustang. Nissan built the car to mimic the Mustang. It was Nissan's like ode to Ford's Mustang. Well, yeah, it, and I can I can definitely see it because it, it's like it's like it's like the it's like the Japanese Fox body. Yeah, I can see that. Again, what I was saying just earlier is that, you know, you guys need to appreciate these cars because there will never be another car like this. Everything's no. going electric and electric cars are garbage <laughs> flat out. I'm uh, I'm not going to get into my views of what's going on in the world, but electric cars are terrible. And yeah, OK, they're great. They're like instant torque off the line and all that other crap. But you're never going to have another car like the S chassis. No. Yeah, you'll have, you'll have insane acceleration, which, you know, cool. But it's never going to be the same thing. They're always going to be really heavy, too. I mean, like, we're never going to oh, see, God. like, a 2,000-pound EV, you know, oh, yeah. that can do anything. Tesla's are like, those are, like, what, like 4,500 pounds? Something like that, yeah. They're pits. I mean, that battery that battery pack is, like, insanely heavy. Yeah. That that damn Hummer EV was, what, like 8,000 pounds? Yeah, it's like they'll collapse a bridge if it goes over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah new, like, oh, there's too many Hummers here. We can't. You got to <laughs> shut the bridge down. Yeah. Is my Type R H parts on that blue car? Uh, hard to say. But you'd probably be the the one to say it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that centerpiece is mine. It's gray. This right here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sick. If that if those are my parts, dude, hell yeah. <laughs> are you on Reddit? Right. I post uh, Lennon Midnight or Lennon underscore Midnight is my name on there. Somebody had registered Dorky Dory and it wasn't me. Was well, son <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please feed the algorithm and hit like. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet, because we do have more content coming for you three times a week. Check out CollectorCarFeed.com slash store for all of our merch, free shipping on orders over $20. CollectorCarFeed.com slash cars is where you'll find our Facebook Marketplace search tool to make your 240SX hunt a little easier. Patreon.com slash CollectorCarFeed is where you go to get bonus content for just a buck. Or click whatever's on your screen right now to keep watching, and we will see you next time. Collector Car Feed, your virtual car our friends now with over 13,800 subscribers. Goodbye.